Steve. Joining me is the strength and conditioning coach, not only for the Boston University Terrier hockey team, but every team at Boston University. They're strong and they're in condition because of Mike Boyle. Well, hopefully that's part of it anyway. I don't want to take too much credit. Obviously, we've got some great people working with our teams, trainers, coaches, the whole deal. When you look at a team like BU on the ice, let's particularly talk about the hockey team. They're so strong, and they continue to come wave after wave after wave. But there are times in the offseason when they're not as strong as they are now. What do you guys do? What do you concentrate on to get them in such good shape? Basically, mostly year-round, we concentrate on their legs, on their hips, on developing leg power. We want to get guys that are going to be faster, that are going to be stronger, particularly in their lower body from their waist down. We do a reasonable amount of upper body work, but more of the concentration is on leg speed and on leg power. Is there something particularly different about hockey players than other athletic teams, say the basketball team or the football team? Obviously, you need complete body strength, but hockey seems to be so much more intense on the legs. Well, I think in one sense, you know, you're combining some of the collision aspects of football with some of the endurance aspects of sports like basketball or soccer. So this guy has to be more of a hybrid kind of athlete because he has to be strong, he has to be powerful, he has to be fast, he has to be able to take collisions, and he has to be in shape. So there's actually a lot of physical demand on these guys. We're so many games into the season right now, yet you're still working with these guys. You said they come to you at least twice a week to work on some other things. What are they working on even now This at this point in the season? At this point in the season, we're starting to do a little more endurance work. We're doing some service circuit training. We're doing some things to get us ready for the playoffs. We lift at least twice a week during the season. Generally, we, want, we run at least once a week during the season, generally either Sundays or Tuesday mornings. Tomorrow, we'll come in after the game at noontime, and we'll probably run two or three miles and circuit train for about 20 minutes. So there's no such thing. Isn't a, isn't a rest day? Now, the guys didn't ask me to ask you about this, but how about a rest day for these guys? Uh, the NCAA makes us have a rest day, but generally we give them off Mondays because we don't have as much confusion with class schedules and trying to get people together on Monday. So, you know, we do things on Sunday. On Monday, they're off, then they practice again on the ice on Tuesday. We talked once before about how important it is the day after you work out really hard to not just sit and relax. You have to work out the lactic acid. That's part of what you what you study, isn't that right? Exactly. You know, we're trying to get these guys to realize that they can push their body to a lot higher level than they think they can. Part of the fact of needing a day off after a game is more mental than physical. We, like I said, we're in here, you know, 13 hours later, we're back working out again. Tell me about some of the specific guys that you find have really benefited from your work. I know some people are saying that Mike Greer has really kind of shrink-wrapped his whole body. You must have to talk about nutrition with a guy like that as well. Well, with Michael, yeah, we had to get Michael to take some body fat off. But he's done an excellent job in terms of he's lowered his body fat by about 10%, maybe even 12% by now. He's lost about 25 pounds of body fat. And at the same time, he hasn't lost an appreciable amount of body weight, so he's been able to add some more muscle. And now he's the strongest guy on our team. He came in with very little background in weight training and has obviously, as you, if you watch the games, has developed into quite a force in two years. You work with J.P. McCursey as well. Uh, some people are very interested in what his rehab is working out like. He looks very good. I've seen him, uh, I saw him just earlier today. He looks very good. J.P. is almost back to being able to do everything he was able to do before the accident. He had some orthopedic problems that people don't worry about after a car accident. They're not really worried about rotator cuff damage or the torn ligament in your knee when you've had a head injury like he did. So it's taken a while to deal with some of those things. And the people down at our Sergeant College um, health profession have done a really nice job with him. The trainers have done a nice job with him. And that's enabled him to get back to the point where he can get back in the weight room and start to do some of the things he needs to do for sort of the next phase of the comeback. Last question. You also work with Cam Neely. Does that help you in that you talk to these other hockey players and you say, look, if I was instrumental in Cam Neely getting healthy, you can listen to me and we can work things out for you? I think obviously when you get to work with somebody of his stature, it lends some credibility to what you're doing. You know, when guys come in the weight room and they see him there and they see him doing a workout that I've helped design for him, that obviously gives me much more credibility with an 18-year-old college player. And uh, Cam Neely today against the Flyers lost a couple of teeth, so Mike Boyle will be recommending a good dentist for Cam Neely after today. Yeah, unfortunately, I feel bad for him. I, if he's watching, I hope you feel better. I imagine he probably isn't uh, eating hamburgers or anything right now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mike Boyle, strength and conditioning coach for all of the Boston University teams.